we've got a couple guys have signed up for at least next year and beyond. And one of those guys, uh, we talked about him a little bit earlier, Daniel Suarez, got a win this year. Had a good run this past weekend using the option tires. And a guy that's been very popular, obviously, in Mexico, had a good run at the race in Brazil. And uh, I think that it's a guy that has been done a really nice job helping NASCAR in the international market. Yes, but an only one year extension um, and uh, he talked about it in positive terms but uh you know at the top you know the the really the 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 better drivers are given more than just one year and uh, i guess we'll have to wait till this time next year to find out what happens after but i'm very happy for him because as we've discussed he, he's uh he's popular uh in the garage too i i don't know many people complaining about him and as a journalist i find him very easy to work with what do you think? I mean, Justin Marks has been a big supporter of his, Dustin. He has been. And I think, you know, leading into the clash this year, I was on the show and we kind of talked about like, you know, this is the year for Daniel Suarez because, you know, last year it was the week of the Daytona 500. He was also given just a one-year extension. So a lot of pressure on him this year. Um, as I mentioned earlier, like like overall, track house is maybe taking a step back compared to the competition. Everyone's getting better. Um, and in track house is still a young team. So, um, you know, a lot of, I will say that like, like the 99 team specifically have, have made some gains over the last month or so, or, you know, I guess month and a half since we had the two week break, but uh, four straight top twenties, three of the last seven finishes in the top 10. And before that, he only had two this year. So uh, the 99 team, I think it's, it's getting, it's streaky, but I think it's getting to the right, spot at the right time of the year entering the playoffs. Right. Also getting a multi-year extension is uh, Eric Jones going to stay with Legacy Motor Club. Yeah, I think that's good. I mean, Jimmy Johnson is 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 building that team. They brought on Doug Ducart, who was at Hendrick once upon a time, and then he was with Chip Ganassi. Uh, that team is maturing um, a little slowly, but it is maturing, and uh, they're getting some very good talent there. So uh, it's good to see that he has uh, he's got a long term deal. Yeah, they, I think that team is, and I think even that team admits, Dustin, they've developed a little more a little more slowly with the Toyota than they expected this year. But you know, Eric Jones has been for the most part the bright spot over there. He hasn't had the consistency I think this year that they'd hoped for. Did have the injury at one point this year, but you know he. He's had an Eric Jones kind of year beyond that. Just uh, like I said, just lacking the consistency. I think Lewis is spot on. He said, you know, it's kind of a building process over with legacy. We've seen a lot of changes recently internally um, at managerial roles. So, you know, you hope all that leads to performance on the racetrack. Um, now, Eric Jones, I feel like he's, a, I feel like he's, you know, a driver who he makes any team better. So, um, and that's the way it's been his whole career. Um, we we've seen you know in, in recent years him have a breakout year in 2022 when the Southern 500 with you know in the 43 car um, obviously back then it was Petty GMS but um, even with the rebound it's been a little bit of a struggle the the switch to Toyota it, it it hasn't I don't think it's gone as planned so far so unfortunately this is for him and John Hunter who's you know had a really bad string of races here or a tough string of races I should say. Unfortunately, I hate to say word like this, but it's kind of a washed year. Who are you hearing is on tap to replace Corey LaJoy in the seven? The world wonders. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dustin should I know mean, that, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. I mean, you look at the names and you hear the names out there, but Justin Haley comes to mind. Obviously, he has um, some ties to Spire. He delivered them the first win. You know, under crazy circumstances <laughs> uh, at Daytona five years ago, um, I think he's, you know, he's the leading candidate. I don't think it's his by any means. There's other, there's other guys out there who, you know, maybe could bring some funding to the table. And you know, with a team like Spire, they're still, they still need some funding. So I would say Justin Haley's the leading candidate. But there's been other drivers out there, like like a Sam Mayer, for instance. He he made it clear to me. He's made it clear publicly that he wants to move to the Cup Series. And I feel like there's a couple of viable options out there. You know, the seats, the musical chairs, the, the chairs are starting to get taken up. Um, and it, it's just going to be a Fiesta seat or not. I think a lot of this, we're still waiting for a couple of these to be filled. We think we know where guys are going to land, but we're still waiting for this whole charter deal to be resolved, Lewis. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I haven't heard anything. I mean, 
I cover other sports, so um, I, I'm not a, at the track and I'm a, a, and uh, as much as, as you or Dustin might be. But uh, well, the Spire situation is interesting to me because of the Game Gamebridge sponsorship. Uh, they they sponsor Michael Andretti in uh, in IndyCar and some other events, and Gamebridge actually is a subsidiary of a company called Thousand and One, and. Uh, Two weeks ago, the uh, the financial president of Andretti says we want to be in NASCAR. So there's all kinds of stuff in my head about Spire, Gamebridge, and when you say money, it, it, they have a lot of money. They do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, where where do we stand on the whole charter thing? Any everybody just take two weeks of vacation and now we start it back up again? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you, you would think. You know, in a perfect world, it would have been done by now, but who knows? It's been a, a lengthier process than I think anyone would have hoped for. Um, I, I really don't have any answers on that, to be honest with you. It's going to be interesting. It needs to get done. Yeah. NASCAR, listen, they have the cards. Dustin can't say that. But it reminds me a little about, again, in history, um, uh, Bill France Jr. and Bruton Smith. Uh, they disagreed, but they needed each other. And that's what we have here. NASCAR needs teams. I, I don't care what you say. You, you, if you have a top product, you're going to need top teams. And and the teams need NASCAR for the venue and, and the television money. So they're going to have to find a way to get together on something. And let me leave with another legal reference. We used to say in civil court where I was, I didn't do criminal law, when both lawyers leave the courthouse unhappy, that's the fair settlement. So... I think what happens at the end of the day, there will be some concessions from NASCAR, and the owners are going to have to make some concessions too. Do we all feel like, Dustin, that once this whole charter thing is resolved, that we know that one Stuart Haas charter is staying with, with the Haas, and it yeah, becomes yeah. the Haas factory team. We know that that's Cole Custer. One we know is going to front row, and we I guess that becomes the Michael McDowell ride. Yep. And then... The other two, one will go to uh, Track House and one will go to uh, 2311? That's what we're hearing. Um, and, you know, we talked about Track House a few minutes ago with, with Daniel Suarez. They've got a lot of drivers under contract right now um, <laughs> and not many seats. So, you know, they, they need some some cards to fill some of those, uh, those drivers. And, and you look at Shane Van Gisbergen, and, I mean, he told me, a month and a half ago or so, like, you know, he moved to America to go cup racing next year. So, um, you know, this was kind of a one-year deal. Colleague knew that at the Xfinity level. They wanted to get it. They're hoping for a couple of wins. They've gotten more than that. They've gotten three. Um, so you would think he's going to be, you know, he's going to be landing at one of the the, the new track house um, um, charter. And then with 20 of 311, um, they have a prior relationship with Monster, obviously, with Tyler Reddick. So I would assume that could be a landing spot for someone like a Riley Herbst. 